data can be transmitted by sending different voltage levels through some sort of medium like a wire. Now the simplest type of signal is a periodic signal which is what this video is about. So if we have S the, the function for some signal over time this means the output of this function will be the voltage level of the signal for any given time then a signal is periodic if this is equal to s applied to little t plus big t for basically all values of t so i'll say uh, you know less than infinity and greater than negative infinity so what is this big t well, this big T is the period. So a periodic signal repeats periodically, and the period within which it repeats is T. Now, a simple example of a periodic signal is a sine wave. Now, if I simply take the sine of T, and I plot it on some xy axis like this, then it starts off at zero. And then as I move along to the right, I will increase and reach a peak. This happens at one for a normal sine wave. And then I'll go back down to zero. And then I'll dip below the zero and I'll have a low peak at minus one and then I'll come back up to zero. Now the sine wave from this point onward just repeats and this goes on off the edge of this paper forever and it also goes in the opposite direction so if I had negative values then it would go down here and then up and then so on. So it goes forever in both directions and it repeats and so the period is this interval within which it repeats so one period of the sine wave is from this point to this point now to generalize this more I'm going to introduce some more features of a periodic signal and also introduce some more variables specifically we have a, which is the peak amplitude. This is typically measured in volts. And then F is the frequency measured in cycles per second, which is another name for Hertz, which is abbreviated like this. This is a very unusual unit uh, because one hertz equals one over one second. So there is no unit for this one thing here. It's kind of unusual. You may also see s to the negative one. Uh, so these are all equivalent. The third property we care about is phase, which is denoted with this Greek letter phi. And this is generally measured in radians. So now let me explain what each of these things are by showing you a new, more general formula. So instead of just a plain sine wave, we'll be using a signal where S of t is a times the sine of 2 pi f t plus phi. So it looks more complicated, but uh, if we put in the right variables, this will look identical to this. In fact, we'll go ahead and scroll this down so we can 
draw a new image and you'll see what I'm talking about. So for this new function, I'll draw my axes like this. So we'll start off at zero. And we'll still have a sine wave that goes up and down and comes back up. But now the height here is going to be equal to A. And the low peak down here is equal to negative A. So by changing A, the amplitude, we can make the strength of the signal increase. Now, as I mentioned before, the time from here to here is the period. Uh, because of how we're drawing this function, this axis represents time. So the period is the difference between the time at this point and the time at this point. Now if we change the frequency, f, what we're saying is we're changing the number of times this wave repeats within one period. So this default sine wave corresponds to a frequency of 1. But if I set the frequency to, tr to 2, twice as much, then that is like I'm squeezing the wave down. And so instead of having only one up and one down within this period, I would have an up and a down and an up and a down within a single period. So this red line corresponds to a frequency of 2, whereas the original was for a frequency of 1. And if I were to make the frequency smaller, it would stretch the wave out, and I would have less than a full wave within one period. So increasing the frequency compresses the wave this way, and decreasing the frequency stretches it out. Now the last piece of this puzzle is the phase. And this one can be difficult to understand. It is the relative position in time within a single period. And so I want to emphasize this relative aspect because it corresponds to sort of your position on these waves and also the frequency. Now ultimately changing the phase will cause the whole wave to either shift left or shift right. But the degree to which it shifts is relative to the frequency. So here is what I mean. I'll start with a fresh sine wave to illustrate. Now before I describe phase let me talk a bit more about what this complicated formula means in comparison with a simple sine of t that we saw earlier. So if I were simply plotting sine of t, then this point on this x-axis, or the time, would correspond to pi. That's this pi, the 3.14 and so on that you've learned in trigonometry. And this point correspond to 2 pi, this would be 3 pi, 4 pi, and so on. So if I'm just plotting sine of t, then the time points are all in terms of pi, which is a bit confusing. So in this formula here, the whole reason that we're multiplying the internal frequency and time by 2 pi is that it has the effect of simplifying our x-axis to the point that this is actually time 1 and this is time 2. Now remember we're talking about this formula now and not this one. So we have this formula and this line I've drawn is for a standard sine wave with a phase of zero. So it's as if we didn't even have that term there. But now I need to see what happens when I change the phase. 
Well, the phase is going to be in radians, and it's going to be in terms of pi, usually. If we're going to if we're going to shift the wave uh, in a way that lines up with any of the key points on the wave. Now, even though our actual time values are 1, 2, and so on, to understand the effect that the phase has on this wave, we need to think in terms of pi. To think about how the phase will affect this sine wave, we have to think about this 1 as being 2 pi. And so that means that this middle point will correspond to pi. This point, this peak here, will be pi over 2. And this trough will be 3 pi over 2. Now if the phase, and I'll use a different color for this, were pi over 2, it would mean that for every value here, we shift the plot by pi over 2. Specifically, when t is at 0, this term goes away, and all that we're left plotting is the sine of pi over 2. That means we'll start at 1, or whatever the amplitude is. And then, once t reaches this point, which is 1 fourth in the actual time domain, but corresponds to pi over 2 in terms of the radians, just think of it like this, 1 fourth times 2 pi equals pi over 2. Well, that means we're computing the sine of pi over 2, that's what this will be, plus a phase of pi over 2. Pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is pi, so we'll actually go all the way down to zero by that point. Then, by the time we get to this time, this is w half of a second in actual time, but if t is one half, then the one half times the two pi simply equals pi. So here we have pi times the frequency, which will be one in this example, plus pi over two. So the sine of 3 pi over 2 is what we'll be plotting at this point. And so you can see that we're simply shifting all of these over by pi over 2. And so as a result, the wave is slightly behind the one with a phase of 0. Now, if it seems like I'm belaboring this point, it's because drawing the correct line for different phase values gets a bit more complicated when you're also changing the frequency. So to wrap this up, let's do one more example where I'm changing multiple values. Here is my reference sine wave with an amplitude of 1, a frequency of 1, and a phase of 0. Now, let's keep the amplitude at 1, but let's see what happens if the frequency is 3 and the phase is pi. So the best way to do this is to think about changing the frequency first, so from going from 1 to 3. And so if only the frequency changed but not the phase, we would still start at 0 and we would have, I'm going to use this pencil here, we would go up first but we need to fit within this period here three of these up-down cycles. So we would go up and then down and we would want this trough to coincide with this peak there. So we down then up so that's one cycle there. We need to fit two more in here. So we'll go up, down. This is not perfectly to scale, but we want this line to go through there. And then we'll go down, then come up, 
And then we want the peak of this to coincide with the trough there. We go down and then down all the way one more time and back up and then we'll cross right there and so within the original period of one up and one down we now have up down up down and up down so if we're only changing the frequency we would squish things that way and this would repeat here like so but the next phase or haha <laughs> of the process requires us to change the phase we're gonna shift it by pi and this is what I mean about the relative position so we've changed the frequency and so when we shift this compressed wave by pi we're doing it with respect to this wave with a frequency of 3 so the question is where is pi on this compressed wave well it's always the case that the first peak is at pi over 2. And then we come back and cross the zero axis again at pi. So when we're shifting this by a phase of pi, all we're doing is shifting it back this much, this amount here. So we're going to draw basically this same wave, except we're going to start this point we're going to move it there so if this is our starting point and we'll go down and that means that we'll come up here and we'll have a peak that coincides with this peak and we'll go back down again and we'll cross there and we'll come back up so the axis will cross the axis at the same point there and alternating again this trough corresponds with this trough in the original wave and then back up and then back down and if I repeat this I'll simply be in the opposite position of the original pencil line like so so the major takeaway from this is that a phase of pi is not a set length on this axis. What it means to shift the phase by pi depends on how compressed or stretched the wave is. In contrast, the amplitude is an absolute quantity and it simply corresponds to a position on the y-axis. So that's a bit easier.